Hi, this is Arn Menconi again, and I'm welcoming you to our show. We have one of my favorite people in the country, Eleanor Goldfield, who's a creative activist. She has her own show. You may have seen it on so many different outlets, but it's called Act Out. She's always speaking out about how activists can get involved. How are you doing, Eleanor? Good. How are you? Great. Um, I'm glad you could put us into your schedule because today is a big day where activists all over the country are rallying against the TPP. But before we get into that, could you just tell us a little bit about why and how you've gotten involved in what you're doing? Sure. Uh, so basically, I, I call myself a creative activist, which means that I, um, I blend politics and creativity. I think if you look back at the history of really any popular uprising, there's no such thing as a popular uprising without a cultural push, whether that be visual art, music, dance, etc. Um, it's very important that people express themselves politically while they're expressing themselves creatively. And I also think that that gives people an in that doesn't seem so droll and so dry, because when you talk politics, it can seem very C-SPAN. Um, so that's what I do, and Act Out, as you mentioned, is uh, is a show that really covers that. It um, it talks about the issues that are that are happening, but it's also sort of the light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it talks about what people are doing right now creatively um, to combat that. It shows people, it gives people access to the movements that are already happening across the country, uh, so people can plug into them. And I also highlight the work of other creative activists, um, filmmakers, musicians, visual artists, um, so that people, people can see other outlets. Uh, the show starts with a spoken word piece, which is also, which is a creative outlet for me, but it also shows people another way to be politically engaged. Um, so that, and of course, then there's then there's the band, which is another iteration of that creative activism. So in a nutshell, that's that's what I do. In a nutshell, I call Eleanor the future. Uh, I met her last year. We were um, with Code Pink. It was a Senate hearing with with um, John McCain, and Code Pink went there to arrest Henry Kissinger for war crimes. And that's when John McCain shouted out to the guy sitting next to me, George Ripley, you lowlife scum, and it's now even part of her show. Um, but Eleanor, what she does is she is able to aggregate news from all over the world of where uprisings and activism is occurring and then distill it down on a weekly basis. On top of that, she's able to write a spoken word piece, and each one of them are off the hook. So go to her show. What we want to now get into is some issues that are facing us right now. Yesterday, in New Zealand, 12 countries signed the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Barack Obama decided not to go. He sent one of his representatives there. Now it's back, and Congress is either going to get this bill, and they've really changed the rules on how much time they get to even debate this on the Senate and House floor, and whether or not it'll even come up this year or they'll punt until the next president is elected. So one of the things I'm trying to do is to get people to retweet on Code Pink that we want Rachel Maddow and Chuck Todd to say uh, that the presidential candidate will not sign it and will not send it to Congress. We've got to get these guys and call them out. Eleanor, can you explain to people why this free trade bill is so important and how it impacts Americans? Sure. Well, the easy answer is, as uh, Julian Assange put it, um, when WikiLeaks started being uh, part of the CPP a few years ago, um, is everything. If you live, if you breathe air, if you eat food, if you speak and drive and walk, then the TPP has you in its crosshairs. Um, so it is, it is so important because it, it encompasses everything. It is a corporate takeover of every facet of our lives, um, everything from the job you have or want to have, um, which, because it would be more difficult to find a good paying job. Um, the food you eat, it would give uh, it would give sovereignty to companies like Monsanto, uh, and we saw a little bit of this with the, with Trans Canada when they sued uh, regarding the, the 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 Keystone XL right. that Obama uh, said no to. They sued because under NAFTA they're allowed to sue for lost profit. Now consider that, but 10, 50 times worse because right. the TPP is considered to be NAFTA on steroids. Right. 
So basically, you can have these multinational corporations that sue countries for lost profit. Uh, and this would include, hypothetically, if you wanted food safety laws. Oh, sorry, well, that cuts into Monsanto's profit, so fuck you, uh, that's not allowed. And this, go, this runs the gamut from everything from digital rights to food to education to the environment. So it's really like, it's really giving corporations the law of the land, which some would argue they already have, but this even, even more so. It is a continuation and a, a complete and utter corporate takeover of our country and our ability as a republic to create our own laws. So that, again, in a nutshell, is the TPP. And um, I think, you know, you mentioned before we started, we started taping that um, people don't even know what it is. And I think this is, this is a factor of the system. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is the most boring thing you could ever have come out of your mouth. And that's the thing. <laughs> people hear a Trans-Pacific Partnership right. and they're like, I was, uh, they just like fall asleep. Um, and so that's why it's so important, again, to infuse this issue with some creative backstory, whether that be a creative protest or whether that be you know telling people like, hey, do you like eating food? Yeah, me too. So you should give a shit about this. It's about... You know, meeting people where they're at and talking to them about something as simple and duh as food or water. And that way they can learn about it in a way that isn't in that C-SPAN context. Right. You know, the, the, the thing that you're describing is called the ISDS. It's not ISIS. It's close, but it's still a terrorist group. And it's the Investor State Dispute Settlement, which is essentially where multinational corporations are creating their own judicial system. That's the way I see it. They're, they're writing all the rules. You know, the, the, the issue that the people who are in favor of it are saying is that it'll bring billions of dollars into the economy. And, and they're not backing it up and showing where all those dollars would come from. Have you been able to figure out or delve into that issue? Well, sure. I mean, just look at all the money that's made from fracking. It's made from coal, oil, and gas. The thing is, who makes that money? Uh, you know, BP, right after the BP oil spill, gave a drop in the bucket, no pun intended, um, payment to say, oops, my bad. And then when Obama opened up more offshore drilling, they made billions. They made that money back in a day. So, yeah, I mean, billions of dollars will flow it, flood into the economy, but based on how our economy runs right now and based on the fact that the TPP would destroy any sort of Wall Street regulation, even more so than it already is, it's very clear where that money's going. And it's very clear why corporate lawyers and their paid off politicians enjoy this, because they're the ones that are going to be profiting. The 99% or the 99.9%, even more, are not going to see a damn dime off of this money that's made. And so that, that's why I can agree, yeah, billions of money, billions of dollars will flood into the economy, just they'll flood to the 0.1%. Right. And then where do you think they're going to put this money? They're going to put it offshore in Ireland and they're not going to, this isn't revenues that are going to be taxed and go back into the government and be able to help us with infrastructure, or free college or single payer health care. So the issues that, and the other thing that we didn't touch on is that pharmaceutical costs will just get higher because the TPP is a 7,000 page doorstop. Is that what it is? Or 5,000 page agreement that almost yeah. none of it is really talking about free trade. It's really set up as a new set of rules for more multinational corporations that are no longer operating inside of countries. They've created their own sovereign borders wherever they are. And the way, I mean, what you said, like five, seven thousand pages, the, the way I tell people, uh, again, so not necessarily dumbing it down, but putting it in context that like, oh, holy shit. If you were to print out, when they released the text, if you were to print it out, one-sided pages, I'm five, eight and a half, uh, and it would have reached my, my waist mm -hmm. if you would have stacked it next to me. So that's, that's how much is in the TPP. Um, and the only people that have really read it, unless there's some poor bastard intern in Congress that's been forced to go through it, are these corporate lawyers. So they're the only ones that really know about it. And you mentioned medicine. And this is all about the patents, the patents on drugs, the patents on even medical equipment. So even something as simple as, um, as a scan could go through the roof in terms of cost. And that would, of course, fall on the, the person doing the scan. And it's the same thing with the Internet. You know, the, 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 um, the copyright laws would be extended and 
and made so much more intense that you could even go to jail for sharing a picture on Facebook that's not yours. So this is, I mean, this is what we're talking about, right. and this is what, you know, the media isn't talking about, and that's why, you know, when you put it in this context, like, hey, did you share a meme today that you didn't make? Oh, yeah, well, you should, you know, put your hands behind your back and have your rights read to you, and when you put it this way, people are like, oh, shit, really? And so I think when you when you are able to put it in these little soundbite, um, make it available in those soundbite paradigms, then it's easier for people to digest, because as you said, nobody... Nobody's looking through five to seven thousand pages of shit like legalese. That's that's not going to happen. Right. The the thing that we no we got a little feedback. Sorry, but every presidential candidate polling over five percent has come out against it. Whether or not they're against it isn't the point because this could come back to Congress after the presidential election, and it could go straight to Congress. So they have to say that they're not going to sign it or send it now. That's a very important point to make here. Um, what, with, what do you think people could be doing? Uh, all of the Colorado legislators in Congress and Senate have come out more or less in favor of the TPP by voting for fast track, except for one. Um, I think we should be calling these people out on their Twitter pages and letting them know because that is the most effective place to be seen. There's petitions going on, there's rallies going on, people make phone calls. What have you seen that's pretty effective? All of the above. I mean, you know how <laughs> the energy strategy of the Republicans is all of the above. I take that in terms of activism. Um, I think that whatever whatever is your forte, um, you know, some people are terrified of calling people. Okay, then don't be that person. <laughs> right. Be the one tweeting. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. I think and a lot of people are so cynical that they say, oh, it doesn't matter if you contact your congressman. It does, because we saw this with SOPA and PIPA, and we almost saw it with Fast Track. And Obama, the only time that he's ever visited the Hill was because of Fast Track. He literally just showed up to, to, to physically, if not monetarily, bribe people into voting for Fast Track. So, but if enough people push for this, we can see it shift. And like you said, presidential candidates have come out against it. And if we can hold them accountable, because I have no, I have no doubt that Hillary would switch if she was in the position to switch. Um, so I think that it is very important to to contact these people and also show up physically. I think in the age of digital activism, it's very easy to say that I, I'll just sit at home and tweet. And sure, you know, tweeting is important, but you have to show up too. And I think it's really important, like we saw yesterday outside the White House, flush the TPP and popular resistance put on an action out there. Flush the TPP is a, a tremendous resource for organizing your own actions, getting in touch with other people, doing actions in your area, and also resources on the backstory of the TPP, uh, printout pamphlets. So that's a great resource and a, a step in the right direction in terms, of, in terms of physically showing up against the TPP. Well, I know that last year when I started talking out against the TPP on social media, the chief of staff for Senator Bennett called me and contacted me and wanted to know why I was raking him again, uh, across the coals on this. And it's very rare to chief of staff to say this. And I said, because your boss is making a big mistake on this. So I didn't expect that. As we wrap up, what are the, you, you started uh, one of your episodes with, I know people aren't following TPP. It was a wake up call to me and I had to get off my butt and start focusing in on it last week. Um, what are the other issues that you want people to be uh, paying close attention to that could be coming up in the next month or so? Uh, I mean, well, the TPP is very important. There's also um, there's also going to be a Supreme Court decision about uh, women's access to health care, in particular uh, abortion. The new um, documentary Trapped talks about this, the ridiculous, of course, Roe v. Wade dictated that abortion is legal. But the uh, incredible loopholes that have been created by the far right to restrict women's access to health care and abortion um, are horrific. And so there's a big action regarding that, I believe, on March 2nd. There's also um, Code Pink is hosting a summit on Saudi Arabia in March as well. March 3rd um, and 5th, yeah. Right, there's actions. I mean, and, and here's, here's, here's the thing. There are actions ongoing for everything. And I know that sounds overwhelming, but um, I... And I don't want this to sound too too hippie or too like yoga teacher, but I would look 
I would look at like yourself and see what your primary issue is. I mean, I started out with environmental activism, then I went to anti-war, and then I sort of had this eureka moment where I was like, oh my God, everything's connected. <laughs> um, but I think like the most important thing is that you figure out what's important to you, and then you fight on those front lines, and you also keep in mind that we're all on the same front lines. So that the Black Lives Matter campaign movement is the environmental movement, is the feminism movement, is the money out of politics movement. And we all need to work together when those moments arise, which is why I think it's really important. Like, if you hear about a Black Lives Matter protest, go. If you hear about uh, an anti-fracking protest, go. It might not be your particular movement, but you need to show up because it is all couched under the same corruption, the same, like the TPP, the same corporate takeover of our rights and our freedoms. Well, I tell you, is she not the future? I mean, the, she covers it all. Artkillingapathy.com, artkillingapathy.com. Her show is Act Out. It's on Occupy.com, Act Out. Eleanor Goldfield is able to take it all in. She's a genius. She's one of the best. I think you should get to know her. I'm studying her. I want to be like somewhere like one-tenth as good as she is in getting people outraged and into activism. We're blessed to have you. Thank you so much for your time. Peace. Thank you for having me. Thank you.